this regard, Mr. Speaker, I want to make two quick statements in my capacity as Minister of Finance. One relates to the matter of the Bank of Commerce in liquidation. And you recall, Mr. Speaker, the thousands of persons in St. Kitts and Nevis and some of our citizens abroad suffered tremendously when in the early 80s the Bank of Commerce went into liquidation. And for a very extended period, many persons were unable to recover their deposits in the bank. Thankfully, in December of 2015, Team Unity was able to convey the good news that the liquidator, Mr. Walter Simmons, had arranged for the St. Kitts and Nevis National Bank to process payouts to persons and record. You may recall, Mr. Speaker, that at that time it was reported that 4,707 checks amassing a grand total of $18.8 million were available for distribution. I can report that a year and a half later, 1,033 checks have been distributed, totaling 13.54 million, Mr. Speaker. The sum of $4.6 million has not yet been collected. These, of course, when we look at the total checks, 4,707 being prepared and 1,033 being distributed. Clearly, these are some of the small depositors with the bank who have not yet gone to collect. And the sum is just under 5 million at 4.6. I would therefore want to make a special appeal to those who directly have deposits in the Bank of Commerce or who have relatives or friends with deposits in the Bank of Commerce to quickly process the same. The vast majority of the checks that have been on claim, I am advised, are as a result or consequence of, one, the sole account holder died intestate and the letter of administration required for the next of kin to claim had not yet been processed by these persons. Another category that has been delinquent, some of the account holders are deceased and no one has come forward. Thirdly, some account holders have migrated overseas. And fourthly, persons listed as trustees and not joint account holders have basically not come forward and there's a decision to, make, to be made by the liquidator regarding these situations where persons are listed on the accounts not as joint account holders but simply as trustees and whether in this consequence the bank ought to make these payments. We certainly would prefer to have this $4.6 million that is there uncollected in the hands of the ordinary people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And therefore we hope that through this, those who have friends, family members, etc., in any way acquainted with the Bank of Commerce and who desire to be informed as to whether there, there are sums available to them can check with the St. Kitts, Nevis and Guela National Bank and certainly can check with Mr. Simmons of Simmons and Associates to get an update on that. Because we'd want to see a bit more progress in relation to the payout. The second matter I want to report upon is that to date we have paid 2,027 persons, a total of 13.3 million as it relates 
to the Former Sugar Workers Restoration Fund. Of course, this number of 2027 compares very favorably with the 968 persons who receive gratuities when the sugar industry closed and those payments were made in 2005 to 2006. So is there is a dramatic <coughs> contrast in terms of the beneficiaries. 2,027 beneficiaries to date on the team unity versus 968 way back then under a former order. We have a number of cases, Mr. Speaker, a number of cases where, as with National, um, the Bank of Commerce, are inst instances where persons would have died interstate and those are going through the necessary processes. Final statement I wish to make, Mr. <coughs> Speaker, is in relation to the matter of national security, to join the members of the public in commending the police for what has been a period of calm and public safety of which each of us can be proud. But more particularly, I want to recognize that as part of our crime reduction and prevention strategies, we have put an emphasis on community outreach and in social interventions. And in this regard, we want to commend all the agencies of national security for the special outreach in this regard. I want in particular to hail the efforts of the St. Kitts and Nevis Fire and Rescue Services, which held its 15th annual summer safety program. This year, the program catered to a record 617 children, 556 in St. Kitts and 61 in Nevis. And this year, for the first time, they added a new core element to the summer program, which emphasized crime and violence. So I therefore want to again commend the Fire and Rescue Services for this important outreach and the fact that they manage to cater to so large and diversify the group of young people from St. Kitts and Nevis. I also want to recognize our community policing initiative and as it were the new impetus to these activities that have been given by the coming and board of Dr. Neil Triton and his wife as they provide leadership and support with some of these initiatives targeting at the at-risk groups and persons who are inclined into gang membership. This effort to improve interaction with the communities around the Federation and to engage our young people who are involved in gangs and or at risk of gang membership as well as the appearance and other stakeholders is being supported by Dr. Neil Strighton and a team of nine police officers. So far, the response has been quite good. So we are not only pursuing the hard policing initiatives, if you will, we are also looking at social interventions with a view in particular to assist the younger generation and to keep them away from an engagement in a life of crime and criminal activities. I gather that the police have these special units and so far they have done good work and they will continue these work in Newtown, in McKnight, in Haynesmith Village, in Shadwell, Sandy Point, Old Road, St. Paul, Skeon, Connery, Molyneux, and Phillips Village. 
Yesterday, they were in fact in Utley's village. And from all feedback and reports from the communities, this new initiative of the Team Unity Administration is being well received and augurs well for the development of better relationship between the police and our people, and in particular, our younger people. Mr. Speaker, I would also, in that vein of commendation, want to recognize and commend the Mulfield Explorers. This has been one of the groups that has been, has been formed as a result of the outreach by the police into the communities, and in particular, in some of the communities designated as hotspots. So far, that group has a membership of 125 children and teenagers, ages 5 to 19. 125 young persons then have come forward out of the Molyneux and Phillips area to be engaged in a constructive way. I therefore want to commend the parents, commend these young people, and to commend the community of Molyneux and Phillips for such a worthy and noble development. Some of the objectives of the groups like the Mulfield Explorers include respecting all rules. So we are attempting to impress that imperative on the children at the attender age. Distinguishing between right and wrong, spreading goodwill and partnership to their community, bringing communities together and generally protecting the future of our federation, i.e. the young people. I would want again to commend the organizers of the Mulfield Explorers and encourage other communities to come on board. The community police officers will assist and support you in organizing and programming for young people. We want to encourage the private sector to sponsor groups like Mulfield Explorers, thereby contributing and as contributing to and assisting in keeping the children in the communities gainfully and constructively occupied and engaged, developing their own character, respect, and good discipline. I want also to advise and to give support and to ask the national community to give support to the police summer youth camp. So we have had a good activity from the, fi the fire and rescue where they were able to provide support to 617 children in their own summer program. The police will be doing a similar exercise over the period 14th, that is next week, to the 27th August 2017. And this program, I am advised, is being led by Constable Percival, and we want to commend him for excellent leadership and for the passion he has shown for this kind of work. An effort will be made over the next two weeks of the camp to encourage the formation of community youth groups of the type we now have in Molyneux and Phillips, involving children from the neighborhood from which they would have hailed and are now participating in the camp. A very rich and varied program of activities has been arranged for the children during the camp. And we gather that this particular camp being put on by the police have had very healthy financial support from the private sector. And we thank them for their support in this regard. The final matter I perhaps could bring some clarity to has to do with the matter of police overtime pay. And to say, Mr. Speaker, that this is a matter that we have budgeted for in the 2017 budget. So any, any announcement that the government is unable to pay overtime is really one of mischief 
and is one of cheap politicization of an issue. This is not a haphazard event in which we are engaged. This is a matter that we planned for over a year ago. And therefore, we have incorporated those sums in our provision for national security. And lest we forget, this team, Unity Administration, gave the Ministry of National Security the largest ever budgetary allocation in the history of law enforcement in this country. I repeat, it is the team Unity Administration that has given the Ministry of National Security the largest ever budgetary allocation in the history of law enforcement in this country. So we have not been shy away, we have never shied away, Mr. Speaker, from giving support to the police. Mr. Speaker, that is important. Hmm? $72 million of support. And when you look at what has been happening before, 2014, etc., Mr. Speaker, then you know that they were doing nothing at all in relation to law enforcement in the country. And no wonder the state of dilapidation that the member for number one spoke to in relation to his portfolio assignment is as it were ubiquitous everywhere in every sector of the government and law enforcement is no different, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, the noise of destruction may get to crescendo level. And we have come to accept that whenever certain personalities enter into the parliament, we are going to get down the street of way, 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 Mr. Speaker. But the people of the country, thankfully, have shown that they have the capacity and the ability to move beyond the noise. And the 15th of February 2015, <laughs> lest we forget, all the noise, all the bands, all the red shorts meant nothing as the people of St. Kitts and Nevis went to the polls, Mr. Speaker, to make and to cast their votes. I would want for the public record to again say that we have been paying overtime payments not only to the police officers, but also to all the other agencies to which payments are due. And those payments have been made, Mr. Speaker, and have covered the period up to January to June. Two sets of payments have been made as we take them in the relevant quarters. And so, Mr. Speaker, there is no confusion with respect to overtime. Once overtime sheets are submitted and the relevant checks are done, payment is promptly being made. And I have spoken to some of them. I have, for example, spoken to Superintendent Adams. And Adams have said to me, I don't understand this foolishness that I heard on Freedom Radio regarding police not getting paid. My men have been paid, and they are very happy, and they are of high spirits. That is the reality, Mr. Speaker, is that you have for this time in our history a government fully committed to do what is necessary to advance law and order in the country and to keep our country safe and secure. And as we have said repeatedly, we will leave no stone unturned to ensure that the country is the safest place, the safest small island state in which anyone can live, invest, or otherwise develop in any way. So we have paid the Defence Force Reserves, we have paid the regular soldiers, and we have even paid members of the Defence Force Band when they have gone beyond the call to make certain special interventions. Mr. Speaker, 
with that particular announcement, Mr. Speaker, and the fact that the, we will pay, we have provided the resources to pay, and persons are being paid in regular intervals in accordance with the agreements and the arrangements which are in place. I want to again commend all in the national community for so far the very peaceful July that we have had relatively and in particular to note that we have just gone through what has been described as one of the best Culturama activities and the records will show that we have sailed through that effort and there have been a peace and joy which we hope would long be extrapolated through the years to come. With those brief interventions, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for engaging and for allowing me to speak as it has been provided for under the standing orders as a measure of accountability. And it is interesting that when members are accounting for their stewardship, as the member for number one was doing, as the member for number eight was doing, we're here on the other side. Well, what it is they are talking and this for. Because they, while here, never effectively utilize a parliamentary provision set down in the context of parliamentarians being able to account for their stewardship. This is something brand new, Mr. Speaker. Brand new, Mr. Speaker, that we have brought in terms of the consistency and the constancy with which we are doing it. And no amount of disruptive and unruly behavior coming from any quarters, especially opposite, will in any way shirk us, allow us to reconcile from doing the right thing on behalf of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.